Welcome, welcome, uh, webinar listeners. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome and uh, appreciate your attendance. Um, give you guys a couple minutes to kind of uh, get in here, get your audio worked out. Um, which is a couple seconds, really. We don't have we don't have a couple minutes. Uh, we got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to uh, to check out and talk about. Super, super excited uh, about this uh, shop talk webinar. Uh, we're here with a very special guest. Uh, and let's let's just jump right in. So uh, today we have Stephen Kunis with us, co-founder of Foria. Uh, very very excited to have you with us, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, coincidentally enough, I'm wearing the same shirt as that photo, so it works out well. <laughs> That's perfect. Perfect. That means we're going to have a fabulous uh, show today. Uh, all right. Uh, also with us is uh, Charmaine. You may or may not be able to see her. Uh, just depends on what Zoom decided to do today uh, with uh, with displaying uh, the panelists. And she is going to uh, help us out with questions and whatnot. So you should see a button that says Q and A on it. Uh, it's a little uh, bubble icons, and you can click on that. Submit your questions as we go through this presentation. Uh, at any time, no worries. Charmaine and I uh, will be kind of working uh, the Q and A in the background, uh, tackling any kind of questions that uh, we can manage. Uh, and of course, um, we're happy to uh, interrupt Stephen during the presentation uh, to answer any of the questions um, that are relevant to you know what's being presented at the time. And we have the live Q and A at the end. Um, and that's about it for uh, questions. So this is, uh, you know, what we're planning on discussing today, a little residential real estate, commercial real estate, virtual staging, uh, smart cities, IoT devices, AR, museums. I mean, a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. So very, very excited to hear uh, from Stephen and Foria and, and learn more about their solutions. Uh, looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing, Stephen, and uh, let you take over. Awesome. Appreciate the introduction and um, thanks so much for having me on today. As you mentioned, I encourage um, all interruptions. So please jump in at any point to ask any questions. Um, I also appreciate uh, Australian internet where I'm based is not the best. So if I'm lagging or if you can't hear me, let me know and I'll slow down or try and repeat something that I'm going through. Um, but today I'm just going to have a really casual conversation uh, around Captured, but there's a few things that I really wanted to discuss that uh, you alluded to at the start there with your agenda. Um, a few new Captured features that we've just rolled out. So the Creator Studio, and that's got virtual staging in it and a whole bunch of other amazing features. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview on that. And then our new augmented reality tool set, which is AR Connect, requires no development tools or development skills set up in five minutes and any existing Matterport space can be an AR experience. Um, and I'm going to be putting through with all of these features, um, a lot of case studies from our customers. I've been speaking to a few of our customers recently around how they're using these tools to generate new business in their areas, um, but also testing out a lot of the features uh, to be an innovator in this field um, as it becomes more and more competitive as we go through. Uh, and there's a couple of exciting releases that I'm going to talk about and a world first as well that I've got in here as, um, as part of that AR Connect piece, which I'll save as a little surprise towards the end. Um, and that last piece there, um, an area which um, our company has been focusing a lot on the last 18 months, which we call digital twin experiences. So obviously Matterport creates some of the best and quickest digital twins out there. Um, that experience layer is where we focus a lot of our effort. And so when you combine things from the Creator Studio and AR Connect, it all comes together really nicely in this piece. But really looking forward to diving into this today with you, Amir. Um, let's jump in. And please, um, questions are welcome from the panel, uh, sorry, the panelists, the people that are attending as well. So a little bit of background. Um, we do a lot of um, talks and webinars in this space, but um, I'm hoping there's a lot of new faces out there today. So a really quick background on us. Uh, we bought our first Matterport camera back in 2015 to be an MSP here in Australia. Uh, we quickly grew to about 15 technicians around the country. And at that time we started building Captured for ourselves as a booking and management system. And so that's when we started Captured back in 2016. Uh, shortly after that, we became the VAR for Matterport. So the value added reseller, so the distributor for the hardware here in Australia um, and New Zealand back in 2018, where we shifted from providing services and focused purely on our software and selling the camera and also building the ecosystem here. Um, now we're really fortunate that we're servicing thousands of captured customers or Matterport customers globally at the moment. And you'll see there's a, a few pieces within this presentation around our patents and the technology that we've created to help boost all MSPs and create bigger and better businesses as well. Um, this is all backed 
by our award-winning XR studio. Um, so Foria is the company in which Captured sits under. And you can see a couple of those projects underneath, uh, Rewild and Ecosphere. Uh, Rewild actually won Best uh, Augmented Reality Experience or Webby a couple of years ago, and Ecosphere came second this year for VR. The reason why these are important is a lot of the learnings that we get from these uh, projects, we bring back into Captured to help our customers build similar experiences, but through the Matterport side of things. Um, and I did put a picture up here uh, just of our Matterport account. Uh, we don't just create for the purpose of creating. Uh, you can see that we've created a lot of value for our customers uh, through the years that we were an MSP. Our systems are currently up to over 10 million views, which I thought was pretty impressive, which we kicked over the other day. Um, so just a bit, of a, a bit of a nod there to that, which is pretty awesome. I'm not going to run through all of this. Um, so we provide a lot at Captured. Um, people have noted us to like a Swiss army knife for everything that you could need for an MSP. If I was to sit here and go through all of our features, um, our heads would probably explode and we just wouldn't have enough time. So I'm going to be focusing on the new things today. Um, but these are all of the areas which we provide value uh, or try to provide value to our customers. Um, things like virtual overlays, which I think we all are, are pretty familiar with. The property templates, which are nice, be able to move things around on a website, automatically generate it. Uh, the white label solution was just one piece here that uh, I want to quickly speak about. It is for free. Uh, the key part around this is, and you'll know if you're one of our customers, um, our brand isn't important to your customers, your brand is. And so putting your brand out there to acquire more business and SEO optimization is the most important thing for us. And then the rest of the items there, you can see a fairly self-explanatory floor plans, site plans, post-production photos, payment system service, your calendars. So your technicians can be automatically booked. And if you choose to, we can collect payments and provide that on your behalf. So you're picking up payments before you actually do the work which is great. A branded portal, um, which is that item there, it reskins our whole platform just for your customers to see your branding or their branding, or however you like it, and all of the scheduled analytic systems as well. So what that does is it automatically generates it for whenever you like, it could be daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it may be, um, and then pushes them out with heat maps. Um, and the last two items there, the delivery service, um, all of this can get wrapped up within 24 hours. And so the way that we like to speak or provide our customers our service is we're um, a big backend house that no one ever sees, but we generate all this um, value while you're asleep. So you're scanning all day, you give us all the um, work overnight, and when you wake up, everything's ready to go. You click a button and deliver to your clients. And that last part there, I think, is one of the most important parts and the unsung hero. Our 24-hour support team, they're always there and available for all of our customers, no matter what the problem at hand. But again, I could walk through this for years to come, but what we're here today to speak about is the Creator Studio and AR Connect, which I'm really excited to share some new features with. So I'm going to start with Creator Studio. Um, and before I continue to talk, I'm just going to play a quick video that gives you a bit of understanding of what's in this Creator Studio. Real quick, just before we get into the video, sorry. Um, so uh, we're, we are getting some comments um, from uh, some people regarding the uh, the quality of the audio. As you mentioned, the internet uh, not not so strong. Um, unfortunately, I think maybe the best thing uh, for you to turn the video off for now, um, in your your video, uh, and uh, and maybe we'll come back to that. Um, turn turn your camera back on when we get to the Q and A panel at the end. There, not a problem at all. Does that sound better? It does. Yeah, we ran into a couple uh, problems there. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're we're good. We're good. I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you. Yeah. Please do. My face for this situation is not important at all. Just as long as you can hear what I'm saying and see what's on the screen, that's all that matters. So um, I'll jump back in with this video here. Um, and I'll talk through it as we're kind of going through. So these um, are a few of the features that are available in our Creator Studio, which we'll go through in a second. So virtual staging, um, augmented reality, being able to see it in space, obviously, uh, background audio, and the custom matter tags being able to change the tags. I'll go through each of these really quickly. Um, I don't want to dive into a, a feature review per se. I really want to dive into the um, case studies, but I think it is important to tell or explain um, how these features work within the systems. <coughs> Excuse me. So virtual staging. Um, there are a lot of virtual staging uh, solutions out there in the market. The key difference here with this is it, it's do it yourself. And it's very, very simple to do. Um, we set our developers and our designers a task of being able to style an entire property, a three bedroom house within five minutes. Um, if you can't uh, utilize these features within a timely manner, 
it doesn't become useful in terms of what we're trying to do. If it takes you a day to stage a property, then the value isn't there to provide to your customers. And that's why it's really important for us to be able to do these things quickly and really um, at an optimized level. Uh, we are really proud to say that we've got the largest library of optimized assets for Matterport virtual staging. And by optimized assets, I mean that all of these assets have been um, compressed and optimized to run on mobile, web, in augmented reality, and in virtual reality as well. Um, we've recently, and I mean recently by a couple of hours ago, added hundreds of commercial real estate assets. And so these are all the things to fit out your office spaces and everything you could possibly need. Um, and we're really excited about all the new updates that we're currently putting forward. Uh, the system has capability for uh, 3D animations. Uh, and I'll show you a few of those in a moment as well. Obviously, the ability to upload your own assets and the key part here around shadow and lighting integrations. People talk about the realism of furniture. A lot of this comes down to the lighting, the textures and the shadows that you can generate within a model to make it look as lifelike as possible. Our team has generated a um, automatic um, light map that understands where light is coming through windows and projects that onto the assets within the tour itself. And the last part, which we'll go through later, is obviously viewable in AR, which I think is the most impressive part about this. So a few of the um, business opportunities that we've seen used already to date um, in the short amount of time that this has been available in the market. Um, first and foremost, real estate. Uh, it has a couple of uh, points of reference that we've seen used in the past. Firstly, uh, open for inspections. This makes complete sense. As you can see in the GIF on the side here, an empty home can be sometimes hard to understand where things are. Um, a house that's filled with objects makes it more contextually understood. And then the second part, um, less so, but I see this becoming more and more frequent, is um, helping the person who's purchased the house or leasing the property to decorate it before they move in. Um, so, uh, secondly here, in terms of the industries, is commercial real estate, um, our fit outs, or the fit-outs that can be provided uh, if you're working within this space, you understand that the clients may have varying different needs. So a startup to a corporate or a co-working space would have completely different designs and being able to show that to your clients quickly and on demand is super important when trying to sell a space, especially some of these large real estate spaces. We see this being one of the larger emerging markets within this area. As I'm sure you're all aware as successful MSPs, residential real estate has limited budget because it's usually coming from an individual, whereas with commercial spaces, it has a lot more because it's coming from a company. The next two I see are here coming up more and more frequently, uh, especially the museums one, but event planning uh, and primarily within weddings, um, more recently, we've been seeing um, these virtual tours and virtual staging being used for planning variations. So uh, for anyone who has planned a wedding, you'd understand the difficulties of understanding variations from um, table setups or uh, theater setups or whatever it may be. And so having all of those ready to go um, is super useful for the end customer. And the last one is museums. Uh, I won't touch this on this too much now because I'll be going into it a fair bit afterwards, but things like exhibition planning and archiving are the two key areas that we're seeing. So planning, obviously, understanding where assets are going and archiving, once the exhibition is done, having a digital replica of what was placed there. Robert, I can see the question in the Q&A. Um, is the site captured.io? Uh, Almost, without the E, and you are spot on. <laughs> Uh, so a couple case studies here that I want to dive into. I had the pleasure of speaking to a number of our customers last week um, as I was doing the rounds uh, and speaking to them how they're using our services. Uh, the first one I wanted to highlight here for some amazing work that they've been doing is Laurie uh, from 3D Amazing Spaces up in um, Rochester, New York, which I understand is upstate New York. Um, and so where she's been um, utilizing virtual staging uh, for her business is selling to higher end real estate companies. Uh, when we were speaking, she was talking about the market becoming more and more competitive um, and using this virtual staging as the point of difference with her competitors. Um, she was talking about how um, she could convert any space um, to a stage space within minutes. And I think this goes back to the premise that we we're talking about before. There are a lot of other um, providers or other providers that can offer this, but in a lot of cases, it takes quite a lot of time and it's also quite costly. So being able to have a quick and effective, a cheap and effective um, option when providing this to customers allows you to stand up from the crowd. I have a, um, an example here from one of her tours. I'll quickly open up. Knowing that my internet probably isn't great, I'll wait for this to load for a second to let it come on in. The really good thing about this property is that um, Laurie's used the mix of our assets and also uploaded her own assets within this space. Amir, is that coming through okay? Uh, yeah, I see it now. We're in the inside view. 
Okay. Um, so these rugs that she's got on the floor are the skins were assets that she's uploaded into the platform and placed it with the furniture there. Also um, part of our collection here. Um, I can easily just turn this off to give you an idea of what that space looked like beforehand. Um, and really quickly, um, you can see the difference by having items within this space and easily showcased where it's um, where things may go. Um, and a key benefit between this and other um, formats of virtual staging is the ability to see it in the dollhouse and floor plan view as well. Stephen, when uh, an asset that is not your own is brought in, does it have that same kind of realistic lighting and shadow uh, thing that you were talking about before? Yeah, it sure does. And it's a really good question as well. So when you upload an asset uh, into our system, um, we compress it with our optimization techniques. And when it's placed within the environment, it's getting treated with the same lighting and shadow effects as our normal assets would as well. Um, it's a really key benefit of it. Uh, some customers have noted that when you're compressing these assets as well, they're lossless thing. So lossless compression, sorry, I can't even speak. It's so early in my morning. Lossless compression means that um, you're seeing the asset exactly the same but it's been compressed down um, from the format that it was originally in. And that, that's going to help with uh, the navigation experience, loading time, and, and things like that as, as the model uh, loads, right? Absolutely. Um, it's one of the key factors around it. Uh, they, if you don't provide a good end user experience, um, there's no point providing it in the first place. Uh, we have three key principles around our design and our development that captured. Um, it needs to be easy for the end user. It needs to be valuable, and it needs to be delightful. And if a user can't load an experience, it's not going to be delightful for them. It's going to be frustrating and they're probably not going to come back. And so our importance on the optimization is the number one priority um, outside of anything else. Otherwise, they won't see the tour and they won't come back. Um, and there's no value that we're providing to you or you are providing to your customer. Uh, real quick about um, assets. Kyle asked the question, is it easy to upload assets into the system? So uh, I know just from like going around and looking at the uh, there are a lot of websites where you can actually go get 3D assets. There's a whole bunch of stuff. People just, you know, create these 3D assets of, of all, like anything you can pretty much imagine. Um, you know, how is that uh, as far as uploading that to, into the system? Yeah, it's super straightforward. So the upload process works pretty much the same way that you would upload an image or a video into any other platform. Um, to find the assets, and I think you raised a really good point there, Amir, um, one of the key websites that we advise our customers to look at is Sketchfab. Um, it's the uh, one of the largest uh, platforms with 3D assets on it. A lot of them are free, some of them you purchase, um, but it's a really good resource to understand where you can find 3D assets as well. Uh, but at the moment, we've got 3D artists and animators uh, working um, every day on creating new assets as well. And so we have feedback forms within our platform. If there are items that you are wanting to see or um, need for a particular client, let us know. Um, and we probably have it on our roadmap. And if not, we can probably add it into it. Uh, a couple of examples of that are within the commercial space with table tennis tables and pin bong balls and things like that as well, which we've recently pushed out. Cool. Um, I'll jump into the next case study, um, following through and get to a couple more questions so I can see them coming through in a second. Um, so the next case study I wanted to quickly highlight was um, Kevin from Home3D based out of Los Angeles. This was a quote that he put up recently on um, the We Get Around network, which I thought was encapsulating a lot of what I just previously spoke about quite well. So it's fast. It's do it yourself. It's amazing. It's not only better than existing ways to stage a Matterport 3D model. It's also less expensive. Learn this before your competitors do. Um, I couldn't agree more. And the, the reason why I really enjoyed this case study was he's been using virtual staging in um, a number of different ways. So obviously an empty house, 100% staged, um, they're the ones that we kind of think of when we think of these processes. But these next two I thought were actually really, um, really interesting. So 75% staging and 25% real staging. So I'm sure we've all scanned those houses where uh, a room has been left out and there's nothing in there or there needs to be an extra plan or two lying around the property. And so rather than um, what previously was uh, an expensive process of adding things in here and there that may not fit, Kevin uses virtual staging to just spruce up the properties um, when they're not complete with their virtual staging items within it. Uh, so I'll just jump in here and it's a nice um, combination. You see the, the pool table, hopefully, if it's loaded correctly, um, with the furniture. 
um, sitting in the living room and even in spaces like this where it can be quite minute um, but provides a lot of effect, um, having a plant in the corner um, with a room full of assets and a few other areas. So you don't need to stage an entire property. You can come in here and really quickly put um, furniture in spaces that needs to be. Uh, and I thought that was a really good concept and an idea that Kevin's been pushing out um, recently. And obviously the um, bigger alternative is where it's only a couple of items just placed within, um, within the house. And so at the moment, um, and I should have mentioned, um, mentioned this up front, virtual staging is completely free on Captured to try. And so we're wanting our customers to test this and get as much information out from the market to see what they need and how they can actually sell this to um, create better business models into the future as well. All right, so continue on to the next case study around virtual staging is around um, museums. And I think this is where a lot of value is, sits outside of the real estate and commercial space in itself. Um, we've seen it and we've used it to help um, planning exhibitions and planning event promotions um, and then also archival content. So uh, anyone that's worked within museums or understands the space, uh, it takes quite a lot of effort and time to understand where new exhibitions are going to be laid out and how they're going to be used. Um, and often this is a very time intensive process by scanning uh, uh, exhibition space and then using the creator studio to place the assets within it we can now bring this down um, quite a lot to a point where it's now um, done within minutes rather than with days um, and the next two kind of uh, are quite concurrent as well so using that tool to then promote the upcoming event and then saving it for once the exhibition is complete. Uh, I've got an example here that shows a few different pieces of this coming together. So this was a um, case study that we did with the Melbourne, you know, um, Melbourne Museum here in Australia. I'll give it a second to load up. <clears throat> um, that link doesn't want to work for us today, so it looks like internet's problematic for both of us. Um, but what that um, link was, it showcased um, animations within an event space in a museum that a team put together to understand how they could utilize the space to its full extent. Um, there's uh, GIFs coming up of it in a moment, so I can be able to just show you through that. But um, those three case studies showing three different variables on how you could use virtual staging for completely empty homes, uh, partial homes, or even in um, unique spaces like museums, I think really show the area of how, or the versatility of how you could use virtual staging outside of your primary real estate spaces as well. So a couple of the new features here that I, um, I quickly wanted to go through that make part of our creator studio. Uh, the first one is media embedding. So the ability to embed any videos, images, or GIFs inside a Matterport tour. Um, the GIF here on the side is showing a video being played and embedded on a wall. The most um, uh, thought of use case here is placing a video within a TV screen that you may have scanned or visualized. Um, there are so many different use cases for this, as you can see at the bottom, welcome messages, promo materials, contact details, um, putting directions through your um, pieces. At our customers have started getting really creative with these items. Uh, I saw in the MOOC uh, recently, a customer talking about um, using a floor mat. Um, so when you scan it, it's in the dollhouse and you can see it. Rather than carting a floor mat around with you everywhere, you can now do that um, in post-production by adding your logo um, or a watermark within the space as well. Um, it has all the standard features here as well. So auto-playing video um, has audios with it and muting and everything else around it. Um, custom tags, and I'll go through an example in a moment with all of these things included. Um, this is changing the icon, the Matterport icon, um, to be um, anything really. We have an asset library of over 8,000 optimized icons that then you can customize yourself as well with colors um, and shapes and everything else around you. You can upload your own icon. So these could be your logos or your client logos and customize the colors and shapes like I've mentioned. A lot of what we've done within this creator studio links back to that quick turnaround time and editing side of things as well. And so we've made it so you can do this across the board within seconds to change all of your icons. Uh, again, it comes back to that point that your time is valuable. It would probably be better for you to be spending time with your family and friends. And so if you could be doing this quickly, um, it's the most important part to us to get value out of it, obviously for yourself and for your customers. And the last one here before I show a quick demo is the audio integration. This allows our customers to upload background audio tracks um, and this comes complete with customized splash screens as well. And so when someone loads the tour, they become familiar that there's going to be audio played um, and notified of it and the choices of it. Uh, we're really, really close to releasing a new feature here that I'm excited about, which is location-based audio. So depending on what room that you're in, um, you'll get fed different information or different sweeps that you're on. You'll get different information and audio provided to you. So they're the features, um, how we've seen them used and how we've used them ourselves. Come down to these two areas at the moment. Uh, the first one is within um, residential real estate. So I'll load this tour up. 
hopefully these ones will work for me. Uh, while you're getting out to work, we have a question from uh, James. Do do all these uh, models that once you've kind of uh, you know uh, added the the virtual staging and and done all the you know matter tagging and whatnot, uh, can you get that into Redfin just like you would any other Matterport model? Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, and I, just, I appreciate that uh, the states also have uh, different requirements with MLS. And so depending on what you're doing with it, um, we have an MLS option for exporting to those platforms as well. And so it adheres to the requirements that are there. The residential real estate example that I was going to show were the gifts that you're seeing on this um, plane here, but it doesn't want to play nicely for me. I know that the University of Camp um, University of Melbourne one will, so I'll jump into this. Before I do, this was a project that we did for the university um, in the middle of lockdown here last year in Australia, where they wanted to showcase um, the university campus. Uh, and so we endeavoured to create a unique experience for them. And what this does is it's uh, combining a number of features that are on captured or about to be released on captured. Um, the first ones that you will see are pre-roll videos. So video playing, and I might just play it and mute it here in a second. Follow your curiosity. So a pre-roll video is a video that plays before anything, it provides context to where you are or where you could be going. Um, these are used on captured at the moment and are available. Um, I'm just going to skip the video and get to the um, interactive portion. So now this is an interactive map um, of the campus itself. It could be a campus. Uh, this could also be used for uh, resorts or it could be used for a large skyscraper that you've scanned multiple apartments within. Uh, if you click on a node, it allows you to kind of move towards it but also you can see the side menu on the left hand where you can change the um, information that you're getting. So study interests, campuses, campus life and accommodation, as you can see there. So I jump back into study interests um, and I'll go to the architectural building here. Um, again, we're using another pre-roll video. And so these things are really simple to put together and that's the way we've designed it, but um, it makes a really nice impact for your end customer. So I jump into this area, use another pre-roll video, which is a drone in this instance, it could be anything, and flying down into the start location for the Matterport door. Hopefully this one loads, otherwise there's something wrong with our Matterport account. Fantastic. So this is the splash screen that I was talking about before um, with sound. And so you can select to start with or without sound. I'm going to start with it, but I'll mute it pretty quickly afterwards so you don't have to listen. Welcome to the Glenn Davis building the award-winning home of the Faculty of Architecture, building at... Awesome. Um, and so this combines a lot of the features that we are just talking about there. <clears throat> Obviously, the ability to mute audio is super important. Um, we can jump through to multiple areas within this building or just jump back to the map as well. Um, all of these features that I've just shown you are available in Capture. Um, this interactive map, so this portion here that I'm showing now, um, it's currently in development. So all of our customers can easily make use of this at a scalable uh, portion. Is that audio uh, that you were playing? Is that something like you'd be able to use that uh, to, to help kind of guide visitors uh, throughout the space? So like when they get into a different room, um, you know, because with these models, it's not just a, a video that plays in a, in a timeline, right? They can navigate and move around and, and skip to places. Will the audio follow them and, and kind of? Yeah, yeah, great question. And um, that goes back to the part that our team's working on right now, which we're coining as location-based audio. So selecting a group of sweeps and placing audio over those. So as you move through the space, um, you get different um, audio layers on top of it. So yeah, it's um, in production at the moment. It was available in that university experience because it was a custom build that we did. But now we're bringing that into um, Captured for all of our customers to make use out of. So that summarizes our Creator Studio uh, really briefly. At the moment, we've got the virtual staging. Um, we've also got the audio tours, um, the media embed, and the custom tags. There is a lot of work going into each one of those. And we're building out a whole suite of um, immersive content that you can play on top or integrate into your Matterport experiences. But the key part for us is all of this and everything that you're doing in Matterport, um, having the ability to be used not only uh, digitally, so online or on your mobile phone, but also on site. And so that's where augmented reality comes into play. Uh, we've been working on AR Connect technically for over three years. We've been building bespoke projects for customers using this technology uh, for two of those years and more recently focusing on how we can make this a scalable tool for anyone to make use of without any development um, skills or needs whatsoever. Um, so at the moment, 
And I'll quickly jump into the AI side of things here. Uh, we've been partnering with Google as one of the early access partners to a lot of their technology to allow us to do this. And we're um, really happy to be featured as part of their recent Google I.O. announcement on how you can use this technology, um, so AI Core Raw Depth. Um, so we're mixing this technology with Matterport to help us create um, what is available today um, and um, ready for you to use on any of your existing Matterport spaces. So in short, I'll let this video load up. Um, how it works is within minutes, you can um, take an existing Matterport tour that you've taken, align it. And so there's an admin setup portion for the person who has scanned the site essentially to align it um, first. And then after that, anyone that uses the um, application can turn up, point their phone at any of the alignment points and then enjoy the experience that you've created for them. Um, I'll quickly run through this video of my colleague Alex showing uh, what's currently available and then go over a few of the features that you see in the video. I'll let him talk. So I'll show you some spatial tags that we've created just in the corner of the office here. Um, these are created as matter tags in the Matterport workshop, but we've gone a step further and we're also now able to integrate uh, websites embedded straight into the Mata tags, SoundCloud links, PDFs. Um, so I'll show you a few examples and um, go from there. So the Matterport camera is just here. We can click on the closest spatial tag. That's going to bring up a PDF of leasing options for the Matterport camera. Obviously, there's so many variables for this to be used in retail and, and other industries. We're going to go over here to this lovely mural on the wall made by a local artist, Lucy Lucy. Click on this matter tag, and this is actually her website embedded straight into that matter tag. So being able to navigate around, no problem. So really great tool for showcasing gallery spaces, museums, etc. Let's move over to the capture tag over here. So we'll click on this spatial tag just there. And this is going to generate a uh, video of capture. So allowing us to play it directly within the matter tag. Straight from there. We'll leave that for another time. And then moving over here, more kind of simple content that we'll integrate into here. So this beautiful uh, fiddle leaf tree, we can click on the tag located there. And as you can see, it's coming up with text, images, some more information. Plants. And then finally over here, have in the music corner SoundCloud integrated directly into that spatial tag. So as you saw, um, as you was going through there, those orbs that were um, hovering within that space, they're actually matter tags. And so they're automatically pulled into the space and aligned once Alex um, sets up the phone and the system that you were um, seeing there. And so the features that you saw in that video were um, spatial websites, as you can see down there, and also spatial tags. Um, so images, videos, audio, PDF, anything that you can put in a matter tag, um, we can bring out into augmented reality. And with the websites, all you need to do is put a URL in your matter tag and we render that as a website. I'll show a little bit of virtual staging and augmented reality in a moment um, in the next slide, but then we also have the measurement tool functionality sharing, um, which are two um, unsung heroes, I think, within this space, providing a lot of value uh, for a number of different use cases, which I'll go through in a moment. Looks like your meta tags are uh, able to even embed full-on websites, which is something that we can't do natively. Correct. Yeah. So our system reads the tag. Um, and understands that there's a URL in there and renders out the website um, so that you don't have to be taken outside of the app or outside of the um, space that you're in. Um, and so similarly, I'll play this video, but I think I'll pause the audio, yeah, and I'll just um, talk over it in its space. So um, what this video is showcasing is the process of scanning uh, a property, so in this case, a residential house, staging it with augmented, um, with uh, virtual staging and then uh, showcasing it on site in itself. Um, so there's Ryan, one of our other co-founders, scanning one of the homes here. Um, so the process of obviously scanning, um, we've all seen this before, trimming a model. Um, this is captured, um, the platform in itself, and so they're uploading it to captured and then placing all the assets within it, as we showcased before, um, a whole bunch of different designs and um, use cases. As you can see there, the house is now completely full with furniture. Um, as they move and reshape different items around the space. And in a moment, you'll see the setup side. And so um, 
Really interestingly as well, the assets come out really beautifully in augmented reality because they've been optimized for web, which comes out really well on mobile phone as well. And so um, you see from here, the ability to see the room with the assets in it that you've placed completely aligned uh, within a centimeter of where you've placed them in the digital twin in the real world, providing amazing context to the rooms that you're in. Hey, Stephen, we have a quick question coming in um, regarding if a location inside is um, messy or already has existing furniture, um, is it possible to remove them um, and add a virtual staging? Yeah, really good question. Um, I'll answer it a couple of different ways. So, uh, no, it's not possible to remove the mess that's there already. That mess has been uh, stitched into the OBJ that Matterport creates. Um, it's not possible right now. I'm sure it will be possible in the near future. Um, what we've been working with a number of customers is um, covering that area with an asset, which is completely possible. Um, and so let's say a client has decided to put all of their rubbish in a corner of the room. Um, this has definitely happened before to most of you, I can guess. Uh, and they're like, oh, just don't photograph that corner of the room. And you have to explain, no, it's 360. It captures everything. Um, and so rather than sitting there for an hour cleaning the um, client's house, you can still scan that in there and then place a couch, a bed or something on top of that space with virtual staging, which will cover it both in the first person view, the floor plan and the um, dollhouse view as well. So this was an example for residential real estate. Again, this could work for open homes or for designing your um, interior design for a home that you recently purchased. Um, and there are different use cases that you can use within the residential real estate space. Uh, moving on to the next one, which is commercial um, experiences. And so again, this is a space I think that's got a lot of benefit within it. Um, we've just released hundreds of assets within this space, which um, I invite you to go and check out everything from uh, meeting pods and glass retainers and plants, reception desks, everything you could possibly think of. Uh, the way that our team's gone about it is designing their dream offices um, and designing those assets to be placed in there as well. Uh, with this, there's a really interesting part to use with the measurement tool. Um, anyone that works within this space know that people have uh, unique uh, furniture or machinery that they're trying to fit into a space. Using the measurement tool in augmented reality allows you to see on site whether or not those items are going to fit there. Uh, I'll quickly play this video um, and let the audio play with this one as well um, as it comes through. <coughs> So Alex, again, our superstar for our videos, I'll just pause it so you can hear me. Um, and a completely empty office that he's looking to um, renovate. The tough difficulty of trying to do it yourself with all the furniture. It can be hard, especially when you're by yourself and measuring is always difficult. Now he found and finds the secret source, which is the Matterport camera. Again, a quick snapshot of our editing tool, joined by you all to check out um, and test out for yourself how simple it is. See, placing an asset, rotating it, easily placing it within the slot that it needs to go. Um, and within minutes, you stage an entire um, office, publishing it, and being able to view it in augmented reality exactly where he placed all the furniture. Awesome. The last um, case study I'll quickly go through, or one of the case studies I'll go through, sorry, <clears throat> using augmented reality with Matterport um, is within IOTs and smart cities. Uh, the city of Melbourne came to us with a interesting task. Uh, they're collecting a lot of data at the moment within different parks, and they wanted to be transparent about the data they're collecting. Uh, and so what they decided to do is use uh, augmented reality to allow anyone within the park to see the information that's being collected while they're there. Um, and we scanned the park, <clears throat> Um, and created a augmented reality layer for it, um, which was used as a guided walking tour. Um, I'm hesitant to even click this link because it looks like a matter of port accounts not playing well, but let's see if it works. No. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, I mean, I know that you did a uh, shop talk, I'm not sure if it was last week or the week before, um, around scanning outdoors. Yeah. Um, so this was scanned, um, it's an outdoor park, um, and we had to scan it pretty late at night. It was scanned at about 2 or 3 a.m., 
Um, I'm making a habit of working late, as you can see. Um, but we had to do it, right? So this was all scanned with the Pro 2 um, to be able to collect it. We tried starting with the BLK, but um, we just had too much difficulty during the day to be able to collect um, this park information. And we are a lot more familiar with the Pro series of Matterport cameras. And so um, this is about, I'll try and do it in feet, um, 1,500 feet by 1,500 feet. So quite a big park that we're able to scan with the Matterport camera. Um, it wasn't easy. It probably took five different goes over five different nights to get it right. Um, but being able to capture this with the Matterport camera and then embed the um, information within it allowed us to create a augmented reality tour right on top of it. And so as we get close here, um, as you can see with the tags, <clears throat> it's just a URL within that matter tag. But our augmented reality system picks this up and then plays it within the space itself. Um, I'll quickly show a video. Uh, this was made for the city of Melbourne. I'll make sure it's on mute and it is seven minutes. Um, I'll just scrub through it to the interesting parts. Um, here, hopefully. And so um, this is the exact thing that I was just showing you there. That orb, again, one of the tags. And rather than see the tag, you now see the website that was linked within it. And this is live data coming through. And so there's a lot of IoT platforms and connectivities that are out there. Um, you can easily just drop those URLs into tags, matter tags, and then see them in augmented reality. This could be around your house for a smart home, a smart city, a smart park, as you're seeing here. Um, or we've also seen it used in facility management. I can definitely see this in facility management. Yeah, for plant rooms um, and understanding those spaces. So as you walk through it, understanding the space and how it is actually working around you without having to look through spreadsheets on multiple devices um, and having all these pages rendered out. Uh, so it's a really interesting use case and we're um, quite happy to be invited along to participate in this experiment with um, the city of Melbourne. And it showed us a really good use case and understanding. We definitely pushed both technologies to the boundaries, both the Matterport and augmented reality um, within AR Connect. Uh, but the end result ended up being fantastic. It's still currently live. So if we do have any listeners in from Melbourne, firstly, go to bed. Secondly, if you're in the park anytime soon, um, I invite you to download the application and test it out for yourself. Quick question. Um, Alan is curious of how many scans um, it took to, um, to scan the park. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, it was a touch over 500, I believe, um, with probably, that, that's 500 that took. I'd say there was probably 125 that misaligned because uh, I got pretty advantageous trying to get further and further ahead. Um, what we did as well, we had an LED panel light on top of the camera. Um, it's a, it's a, I was going to say a trick, but it's a technique, I should say, that um, a lot of people use when scanning at night. Uh, the LED panel uh, provides light in front of the camera as it spins, and it actually does a really good job because it evenly disperses the light as it's moving. Um, and it's a really good process um, of if you did want to capture anything at night, I highly recommend it. Uh, so this is one of our customers on Capture that I wanted to highlight and just do a quick case study on. Uh, I had a chat with Paul uh, from Real 3D Vision from Ohio um, not too long ago around how he's using augmented reality and in particular AR Connect um, within his space and within his region of the world as well. So um, Paul's been working with a lot of cathedrals within his um, area, but he's found it become more and more competitive within the space. And so in one of the cathedrals that he scanned, there's this really interesting story um, around the different artifacts that are on the wall. And what he decided to do was create a um, AR Connect uh, walking tour or guided tour within that cathedral. I'll see if this opens up. This is his link to it. It's a beautiful um, tour that he's captured here as well, as you can see from this. Um, and so it's an, an amazing canvas to test on, firstly. Um, it's just a beautiful tour um, with so much like light, bright colors and just everything in here looks beautiful. And so he's placed um, videos within all of these tags along the wall that tell a story. Um, and what he decided to do for this first cathedral was to test out augmented reality. And he showed the cathedral the end experience and that has now opened up the network of cathedrals within his state and surrounding regions for him to work with and when speaking to him he um he noted that he's going to start using this technique a lot more often where using the technology to open up um, larger networks uh, within his working in and something that he pointed out was was something really nice where he's been um looked upon as an innovator within this field and that's the exact position that we want to put our customers in showing their customers something that's never been seen before and providing it really really easily as well which i think is the most important part um, so shout out to Paul from Ohio. I think it's a great use case that he's working on there. So where to next? I've got a, 
a pretty big surprise um, in a second. Um, but before I do, I'm going to quickly play this video and show some of the upcoming features that are um, coming this year in AR Connect. I'll make sure the audio is off as well. So wayfinding, um, this was done specifically for a project, this wayfinding that you can see here. Um, I've got a surprise in a moment around this. Um, annotations, um, which I think is going to be super exciting. Uh, we had a webinar recently with Bruce Wells from the Matterport team around something to do with this, but I'll touch on in a second. That was IoT, BIM. Um, again, for facility management, this is a, an amazing facility management tool, which is heat maps within a space based off the IoT sensors that you can see in that video. Um, and so there's a number of areas which we're focusing on. Uh, so just quickly into what we call two-way tags or annotations. Uh, we had Bruce on one of our webinars recently, and he was talking in, about a new release that's coming soon um, called Notes, um, where you can communicate on a tag. I'm not sure if it's been spoken about on this webinar, um, but that's essentially what you're going to be able to do in augmented reality or um, place a tag and have that generate a matter tag within the environment. So if you're in a university campus and you see a broken light socket, you can tag it with a, a matter tag and in augmented reality and have that saved within the digital twin. And so you've got this living organism now within that site. A lot of the new features we're working on are within the facility management and engineering space, similar to BIM as well. And that last part there, I think is probably the most important for a lot of people. It's white labeling that application. And it goes back to what I was speaking about originally around our brand taking a backseat and your brand going forward. Um, the white label application is going to be super important for bigger clients as well. Uh, if you were to land an IKEA, for instance, um, they're not going to want an AR Connect app. They're going to want an IKEA app. And so being able to provide that's going to be super important. So this is a quick surprise that I have. Um, everything up until this point, um, our our uh, content and marketing team have generated the vast majority of the content or all of the content. And that's why it's so nice and polished. What you're about to see is something that I recorded a couple of hours ago because I was too, too excited that the release happened. Um, so our team have been working really, really hard on AR wayfinding. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, wayfinding is kind of like Google Maps, but inside. The reason why it doesn't exist at the moment is because um, Google Maps works with satellites. Internally, it's, um, it doesn't work because of the internal spaces. Um, and no one's really mapped those spaces adequately enough to provide a service. Um, obviously, Matterport comes along and we've got amazingly mapped spaces, but no one has had the technology to create the wayfinding. Uh, our team's been working on this for um, this entire year. And it's getting to a point now where we have um, finished the tech side and we're polishing up the UI and the UX. So I need a preference, everything that you see in this video, um, the UI is not complete. There's still a, um, a lot to be updated to make it a lot more polished and a lot more clean, but the, the process behind it um, is all there and available. So I'm going to play this video and quickly talk over it. Good, it's on mute. You're getting a quick glimpse of our office as well. Apologies, it's a mess. We're doing a renovation. Um, so this is us walking in and this is um, a screen recording from the AR application. I've got staging on, I've got a table tennis table um, sitting in that room there. I now click on wayfinding and these are all the locations that I can move to. I'll quickly pause it there. So I've clicked on my desk um, so I can navigate to um, that desk there. All those items there that you see, um, they're pulled automatically from matter tags. And so you can currently wayfind to any matter tag and then their map comes up and shows you exactly where you're um, moving within that space. So let's continue playing through. So as you can see, the arrow pops up. All of this is still to be updated and polished, obviously. Um, and you can see little, um, markers on the floor as we walk in a second um, that guide you along that way as well so you know you're going in the right direction see a little tag that i pass here on the left also added in an animation just because i realized i haven't shown one yet um, this is one of our friendly elephants we added into the space i waited for him to get out of the way before continuing on our journey you can see the arrow is still guiding me through the office and the little breadcrumbs as we call them on the floor showing us the right direction it's turning us in and this is exactly where I'm sitting at the moment. Um, you can probably see the similarities. No, you can't, my camera's off um, around me and obviously at my desk here. And so it notifies me that I'm here. This is where I'm sitting right now. Um, and the ability at the bottom to now, where would I, else would I like to go? Um, for me, the most walked path in my office is from my desk to the kitchen. So I decided to test it out. Um, you can see on the map, it's automatically updating depending on where I move as well. So it's providing me with the shortest path at all times. And the map again, showing the um, location of where I am and where I'm heading. So I'm heading down towards the kitchen. It's not the most uh, difficult wayfinding path. It's been a straight line pretty much this whole time. I appreciate that. Um, on the stop, I just started to click a tag to see what was there. Um, again, another animation here um, from our catalog of 3D assets, which is a crazy orangutan running around.
again, the fidelity of the assets is quite high within these spaces and then walking within the kitchen um, for which I arrive. So um, our team is planning on releasing a early um, release access of this prototyping within the coming months uh, for all of our early access partners to get access to, provide us feedback on, see what they want to um, see or what, what need, what's needs changing. Uh, where I see this being super valuable, um, goes on, I go towards the exit, but where I see this being super valuable is within large spaces where um, people get lost before. Um, shopping centers is a really good example. How many times have you stood in front of that sign that says you are here and you still have no idea where you're standing? It's solving that problem for the end user. The same thing within airports and museums, creating guided tours. Um, that's where a lot of this value is going to be created using AR or internal wayfinding. Yeah, I can completely see it in a lot of different use cases. I mean, shopping malls and centers, uh, are a great example. Every one of those little directories uh, takes at least a few minutes where you should just be able to scan a QR code to load in that, uh, that AR experience and wayfinding and, you know, more easily search for what you want as opposed to like finding it on the map. It's just, that would be amazing. I can see it in museums and hospitals. That, that's, that's like, just like mind blowing right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no, it's, um, that's exactly it. Um, we've been working pretty hard to make this super accessible as well. And I think that last point at the bottom is probably the most important. Uh, this whole thing takes less than five minutes to activate on an existing tour. And so if you've got matter tags within a tour, um, you could set this up and start wayfinding within five minutes. To put this into context, when we started developing these as custom projects, it would take us nine months to develop out a project for a customer like this. And our team's managed to almost automate this whole process for all of you to make use of on your Matterport tours um, really, really simply as well. <clears throat> And so we're really excited to get this to market. Um, we are taking our time with it though, because we understand that it's important to get it right. Um, Cause the people that you're going to be showing need to be able to use this without even thinking. And it comes back to our three principles, um, be easy for the end user, be valuable and be delightful. Um, but we're really excited to get this to market really soon. Oh, that, that is very, very cool. That's awesome. And uh, you said wayfinding is going to be available pretty soon, but right now people can go to captured and and do that whole virtual staging. They can just play around with it and see what it looks like, how it works. That's it. Yep. Um, AR Connect is also available, um, and you can use it for the tags and everything around it. Um, both of these services and features are currently free as well. So I, I highly um, highly encourage you to um, jump into the free trial and test this all out um, and see how it works with your customer base and the tools that you've created. Um, I had a couple of quick last slides here, just when you combine all these things, something that we've been working on here in Australia within our market um, is creating these digital twin experiences. So what we're calling DTXs, um, combining the creator studio and the um, AR Connect and offering it to clients as a complete package. Um, it's 10Xing essentially what you could charge for a scan based on the same amount of work that you're already doing because you're providing all these experiential pieces together. Um, I won't go into this too far, but um, essentially the digital twin is a contextual layer and there's four areas that we focus on which being communication, information, analytics, and art. Um, I forgot to mention up front, but we will be um, hopefully sending out a version of this PDF um, or this presentation, sorry, after the um, presentation. So um, make use of all of these slides and be able to help understand it a little bit more as well. And so again, here are the different areas which we've just discussed. So being able to explore on your phone, um, sorry, on your computer or in augmented reality in the real world. Um, the features that we are just, just discussing, um, as you were talking about before, Amir, actually the location-based audios. So setting these up within different areas, hypothetically within a museum, adding animations um, within a space as well to bring it all to life, um, whether, it with, whether it's on a desktop or on a mobile device. Um, quick example here of placing an animation um, within our editor, within the Matterport tour, and then seeing it in augmented reality in the exact same location on site. And so it's combining these things, which take um, relatively not too much extra time, but amazing value adds to your customers. Um, and the last two pieces here, like I've shown before with the elephant and the orangutan, being able to place those animated 3D assets within a scene um, can provide so much value as well. Some of the three areas that we're focusing on right now, um, a big part of what we like to do is create case studies. So our customers can use these within their spaces as well. Um, but the Royal Exhibition uh, Building, which is a heritage listed site here in Melbourne, um, we're creating an experience of going back in, part, in the 
history to see all the different world's fairs that were hosted there. The Sydney Opera House, which I hope most people have heard of, um, doing an amazing DTX there of different performances as you move through that space that have previously taken place. Um, and some of our rich history here in Australia uh, through the caves where some of the oldest um, stories in um, humanity lie and they're being preserved at the moment with Matterport cameras. We want to get Indigenous artists to tell those stories and bring them to life both online and on site when people are out there. Um, so this is um, one of the last slides that I've got here and we can dive into some questions for the remaining time. Um, but that top left part is everything that you're capturing already. So the 3D tour, the images, the audio and everything else, when you put it into Captured, you're able to output relatively automatically experiences that run on mobile, web, augmented reality, and in VR. I saw a question, I think it was from Matt Horn um, in there before around how does this work within virtual reality? Everything that I've shown you today automatically works within Oculus headsets through WebXR, so opening it up into the headset. And so you have all of these amazing tool sets available to you. And that last part around distribution, we're all really familiar around digital distribution. So web, mobile, and to a certain extent, VR. Um, more recently, AR, obviously with AR Connect. But now we're bringing it into that physical location. So opening up a whole new portion of a market, which previously wasn't tapped into by MSPs. And so offering a collective or, um, experience that you can offer back into these areas that you may be working with both digitally and on site. So just summing it all up, um, how do you get involved? I highly recommend signing up for Captured. Uh, you get $75 worth of free credits. But as I mentioned, both virtual staging and AR Connect are currently free, so no better time to jump in um, and try it out for yourself. I highly recommend creating some DTXs for yourself. It might be of your own home or a space that you've recently scanned and use it as marketing collateral within your areas um, and see how it feels, um, how easy it actually is to work. And if you do have any questions, obviously contact us. Uh, and that last part there, um, feel free to get in touch with our team. Collectively, we have close to 100 years worth of experience within this industry. Um, and so if we can't answer one of those questions, I'd be hard pressed to find someone that could, but we are more than happy to help. Um, please get in touch with any of us about anything um, and we can discuss it further. Brilliant. How, how, what's the best way of getting in touch with you? Uh, so there's two ways. Um, obviously, sign up to Captured. We have our support um, email, which is support at captured.io. Um, but this community group on Facebook um, is just getting better and better by the day. So um, the we call it the CCG, but the Captured community group, if you search that on Facebook, um, please add yourself. There's some amazing conversation there around how people are using um, the DTXs or creating DTXs and selling them within their markets. There's some really amazing people within our Matterport network globally um, and working with each other uh, has seen some amazing results. So I think this is probably one of the best areas to communicate at. Yeah, that was, uh, that was absolutely amazing. Uh, love it. So uh, one question that actually came up um, before we get into the Q&A, and I do want to dive in as quickly as possible. Um, it looks like we're probably uh, don't, don't have a whole lot. Do you, do you have like another five, 10 minutes for questions? All time the world. Are you awake? All right, fantastic. Uh, so, so one question that I did want to ask, uh, you mentioned about the VR uh, experience. And how that all works through um, through uh, the, the, uh, the web browser, right? You go in, you put the Oculus on, you navigate to the web browser, and then you go to the same link that you would uh, anywhere else, right? Um, does that support uh, matter tags using your system? Is that can you actually click on the little tag with the with the pointer? It's a really good question. Um, not quite just yet, um, but it's super, super close. It's the next round of our custom tags feature that's coming through. But all of the virtual staging currently works um, and all of the other features within the Greatest Studio, including the Media Embed, um, currently works within that um, stage. So you might not be able to place a tag, but you can embed your media within a space and see it within virtual reality. You know, you talked about uh, MSPs, service partners going out there. And you, you had one, you gave the, uh, the one with the cathedral who went out there and, and shot that. Uh, and then went ahead and just did this and presented it to them. Uh, I think that that's just by itself is an amazing story. And what I would, you know, recommend uh, a lot of people try and do is like go to museums. Uh, a lot of them collaborate and, and work together. Um, Say, so, hey, can I scan this, uh, this uh, you know, experience that you have? Uh, they have these like these moving uh, exhibitions, right? Uh, scan it, you can do all the audio and whatnot and show it to them. Uh, that's something that uh, then they can like pass on to other museums in the network. And it's just a really good way of getting, getting it out there and, and getting you as a, as a service partner or a service provider, uh, you know, getting you to do more business basically. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I think because um, Matterport 
is more globally recognized and um, understood these days where before previously a lot of education went into um, these things. And so it's still around getting paid for creating that content up front for the Matterport tour and then showcasing um, with quite a lot of ease how much more value you can add on top of it. And so when people are looking or comparing different organizations and businesses, they're going to have your company in front of mind because of all this amazing stuff they didn't think was possible. Yeah, completely. Uh and you said everything is uh, can be white labeled. They can pretty much do whatever they want as far as adding in their own, you know, branding and whatnot, and, and get get your name as a as a service provider out there. Um, and especially, you know, with something like Capture Services that we most recently launched. I mean, you don't even have to be the one out there scanning. You're just the one providing that added benefit of something like uh, you know captured and. Uh, you know, other services that uh, that you guys offered to the client. You just have to get the client, somebody else can scan it and you, you know, work the magic with Captured uh, and provide your client that end solution. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's the, it's the magic trick behind it all, the backend powerhouse. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's check out a couple of questions. Um, There's one here that stood out to me um, that came up before I'll quickly answer no means. from Emma Mel um, Donando. Hopefully I'm saying that right and apologies if I'm not. Um, in the future, um, can staging be done with a Z1 camera? Uh, it's currently available now. Um, and so across the suite of devices that create Matterport tours, whether it's an iPhone um, all the way through to a BLK, if you're uploading it into the Matterport ecosphere, it can be used within our creator studio and within AR Connect. And so we're deeply connected. And again, another big shout out to the Matterport engineers and developers. Um, their work within the API and SDK has been phenomenal. Um, but uh, if it's in the Matterport environment, we can do everything um, that I've shown you today. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question, actually, because um, you would think like you'd you'd need something like the Pro Two, right? When in fact it doesn't. It's not about the camera that was used to capture the the model, as long as it's in the matter the Matterport uh, system. Uh, so Paul asks, uh, does everyone have to have AR on their phones? Uh, is that I'm not even sure. I'm not as familiar with AR, uh, obviously, as you are, Stephen. Uh, is that a thing that that specific phone models have, or is that a thing that anybody with a web browser can just use as long as they have a phone, a smartphone these days? Yeah, it's a really good question, and it's kind of in two parts here. So, yes, um, if the phone does need to have AR in it, um, but any phone that's more recent than four years, so this goes back now to 2017, Yep, how's my maths? Yeah, 2017 has AR capabilities within it. So AR Core on Android and AR Kit um, on Apple. And so that portion of the market is almost 90% of the global mobile phone market um, that has capabilities to access augmented reality. Obviously, the more recent phones, like the LiDAR um, iPhone 12, is going to have better alignment and stability because it's got more technology within it. But almost all phones, and smartphones, sorry, have the capability to access this experience. Got it. So it's not just, uh, you know, like the iPhone 12 that you mentioned with LiDAR, that's not something that's required uh, any phone newer than, you know, it was four years ago, which is yeah. a lot of different models. Yeah, I think it, um, our developers tested on iPhone 7 or 8 and it worked fine. So cool. it goes back quite a while. Um, this is a really good question. I was wondering the same thing. How do users align to the AR sites? Um, so obviously when you're in AR, you're not seeing the Matterport model itself. You're just seeing the tags that were laid out. Uh, when they first go into a space like that church, how do they get those two to sync? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, a lot of really good questions, actually, which I, I'm happy to <laughs> see coming through. Uh, so there's a lot of work that's been gone into it and a lot of where our IP sits as a company for this alignment process. But um, you'll see as you go through, um, the way that it works is in, in simple terms, um, you start on Captured and within the Matterport tour, and we ask you to set up an alignment point, which is essentially measuring two parts of a, um, the model. And so using the measure, measurement tool, um, you could hypothetically measure a doorway and we get that measurement, let's call it um, three feet. I was going to say meters, but I'll stick to American feet. Um, so it's in three feet. Um, and then you save that as an alignment point, and it takes an image of that area. You can do that um, up to 100 times within a space, the more the merrier. As an admin, when you go back um, to the site, you pull up your AR Connect phone, and it asks you to complete that alignment point. And what you do is you do that exact same measurement in the real world, as you do in the digital, uh, in the virtual tour. And what that does is it connects the Matterport tour to the physical site um, and everything else then snaps into place. And the more alignment points that you put around um, in the background, 
they automatically connect as you walk through the space. Um, so as an end user, you don't have to do any of this. You pull your phone up, it sees one of these alignment points, it automatically aligns, it shows the tags. And as you're moving around the space, the technology in the background's looking for more alignment points as you're moving. And so it's automatically keeping everything exactly where it should be placed um, as you're moving through the area. Hopefully that made sense and I didn't overcomplicate it. So, so the end user, uh, just to kind of clarify, as the admin, as the person putting this together, the person who shot that cathedral, for example, uh, he goes around and takes all these little measurements of different things throughout the, the space uh, mm -hmm. within uh, your system or, or Matterport using a little measurement tool, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the end user uh, who scans the QR code to, to access the link doesn't really have to do anything, just holds up the camera. Yep. They held up the camera. Um, it will advise them to go to a starting location for the experience. That's one of the alignment points. And so it will guide them to that nearest point. Um, they use their phone, their camera's open. They takes about a second, they move their phone around. It goes, yep. And away you go into the space. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Let's see. We had uh, another question about um, the, the 3D virtual staging uh, from Maggie who said virtual staging is free right now. Uh, is there a plan to charge for it in the future? Uh, it will be in the future. Um, at the moment, we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to utilize this technology um, and start creating amazing material that they can market and also sell to their customers. Uh, in the market at the moment, uh, there are a number of different providers and it could cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars because of the time that it takes to do virtual staging, which is the, um, they pull out a panorama image, they do photo um, shop and put it back in. Um, it's a very timely process. Uh, with ours, because it's a DIY tool, um, it's going to be very inexpensive. Um, it's going to be less than $100 uh, in some point in the future, but there's no timeline on when we're going to start charging for it. Uh, any other questions that that, uh, that stood out? That uh... Uh... Yeah, so uh, this is in relation to the audio overlays. At the moment, it accepts um, audio files being uploaded into the system. Um, so it does need to be recorded by someone. I know that there's a lot of tools out there that do text to voice uh, online that you could easily utilize, save that file and upload into the system. It's also just as easy to record uh, something on your smartphone as an audio track and then upload that into the system. Good question, right? Thank you. Um, I just see one last one I'll quickly answer. Um, um, can you detail where I can find captured uh, group on Facebook? Yes, it's under the captured community group or CCG. Um, and you've spelt captured perfectly there as well, um, Miguel. So hopefully you can find it through there. And um, I'm, as we're providing the presentation after, um, all the links will be in that as well. Fantastic. All right. Uh, that was that was amazing. Uh, I, I love these, uh, these presentations of, you know, like this, this almost feels like, you know, talking about the future and what's to come, but it's like, it's now. It's, it's <laughs> things that you can actually do. And and whole uh, AR experience to me is is just phenomenal. That, that's super cool. Um, can't wait for, the, for this technology to like really catch on and, you know, MSPs to start, uh, you know, offering it as a service uh, and just really get this out there. Because I think a, a ton of public spaces uh, can be massively improved uh, you know, with this kind of experience when you're, when you're there visiting, uh, there's, um, it's just, it's huge. It's huge. I, yeah. So. I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for having us on. Um, hopefully we can come back at some other point in the future and show you some of the new updates as well, but really appreciate all the work that you've been doing in here as well. Um, explaining everything with all these shop talks that have been amazing to follow. Um, so appreciate your work and everyone else at Matterports as well. So thank you very much. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to be here. Uh, I just have one, one last, uh, it's not a question, but you know, we get this a lot and I, I recently, uh, uh, ran into this again, uh, and you know, being an SDK partner, uh, and doing so many amazing things, uh, I want to put this out there because somebody needs to do this, uh, whether you guys want to tackle it or if it's another SDK partner, somebody needs to do this. Uh, so many people, uh, talk to us and ask us about removing the camera from mirrors. <laughs> so <laughs> I know you guys do. Uh, virtual staging, is there anything that can be done to um, somewhat, 
I, I don't know if I don't know. You you would know better than I would. Uh, if something like that can be uh, somewhat automated with some kind of a machine learning to identify the camera, take what's 180 degrees on the other side and kind of rubber stamp it there. Don't know yeah. how it's going to work and how you're going to do it, but but it needs to happen. I, I have this saying in our organization, and my developers hate it. Um, all of them, I go, oh, it's going to it's going to be quick. It's going to take two weeks, and they think everything. I think everything's going to take two weeks, but I think this is actually a pretty quick one, right? Um, if your camera is facing the mirror the back end of that panorama would be the reflection of that mirror if it was right. there. Exactly. So you could um, superimpose what it's seeing on the back of that panorama in front of it, and it just needs to be cropped within the area that you've marked as a mirror. Um, logically, it makes and sense. I'm sure logically, it makes perfect sense to me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and even if there's like a little bit of ghosting or so, you know, it's not perfect, <laughs> I, I get it, but, but a lot of uh, customers would definitely pay, you know, uh, probably like a dollar per scan position, and, and that's it. That's all you need. That that's your business, right? That's there. it. That's your business. <laughs> awesome. Well, watch this space. Um, I'll, I'll have a chat to our developers in the morning and see what we can do. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. So, uh, thank you so so much, Stephen. Uh, again, just just really appreciate it. Uh, all the information and this uh, technology that you laid out in front of us today is uh, super helpful and, and inspiring, to say the least. So, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, hopefully, speak to you all soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Really appreciate all your questions as well. Bye-bye. Thanks.